How's it going everyone? My name is Miguel Fuentes and today is Friday, um, Friday, July the 16th. And, uh, now before I get started, I am way behind on, you know, the Bible study and I may have to do the video podcast on Saturday, uh, because of my tight work schedule, uh, and, uh, I, you know, I got home, like, around 5 o'clock, uh, at least two times, uh, this week, and I was so exhausted that I could not do the Bible study, so, I'm glad I got, I, I'm glad I got home early, so that I can, you know, make some time to make up and all that stuff, and, uh, so, yeah. So today's teaching, we're going to get into the book of Acts from chapter 6 to chapter 8 today. And before I uh, get started, let's go ahead and pray first. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've that you've done, Lord. Uh, Father, we just ask that you would bless this word, Lord, as we... Uh, Get into your word, Lord, and I pray that you fill our hearts with peace and, and sound mind. And Lord, we, we, we pray, Lord, if we have sin in our hearts, Lord, we repent. Lord, wash us clean by your blood. Lord, help us, Lord, to understand your word and to apply your word into our daily lives. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Which, by the way, today is a very, very hot day today uh, in Raleigh. If you can see, my forehead and my cheeks are so red. And it feels like my face is on fire. I'm sweating a lot from um, all that stuff. And it's bad. So, yeah, my feet aches and all. But praise the Lord. God would give me strength to overcome. Amen. Alright. So, Acts chapter 6. If you're there, I'm reading out of the uh, modern English version uh, today. And it reads, Now in those days, as the disciples were multiplied, there was murmuring among the Hellenists against the Jews. Because the widows were overlooked in the daily dis 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 uh, disputation, so the twelve called the multitude of disciples together and said, "Is it not reasonable for us to leave the word of God and serve tables, brothers? Look among yourselves, for seven men who are known to be full." Of the Holy Spirit and of wisdom, who we will appoint over this duty, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what was said pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, who was a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And Philip and Pocontinus and Nicanos and Taman and Par Parmenas and Nicholas a uh, a postly from from uh, Antioch who they present before the apostles. And when they are sorry, and when they had prayed, they placed their hands on them. So the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples grew rapidly in Jerusalem, and a great number of the priests were obedient to the faith. Now Stephen, full of faith and power, did great war sorry, great wonders and miracles among the people. 
Then some men rose up from what is called the synagogue of freemen, uh, disputing what with Stephen. But they were not able to withstand the wisdom in the Holy Spirit, in the Spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly in this gate men who said who we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and seized him and led him to the Sanhedrin and set up false witnesses who said this this man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place in the law. For well, we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the custom which Moses handed down to us. All who sat in the Sanhedrin glazing at him said his, saw his face as the face of an angel. Hmm. Interesting. Let's go ahead and read verse 7. Then the high priest says, Are these things so? He said, Brothers and fathers, listen. The glory of God appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran and says to him, Leave your country and your relatives, and come to the land which I will show you. Then he departed from the land of the of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran. When his father died, he removed him from there to this land in which you now live. <coughs> he gave him no inheritance in it nor a footstool, and promised to give it to him as a possession and to his descendants after him, while he had no children or child. God spoke in this way, Your descendants shall be forjourners in a land belongs to others, who will enslave them and mistreat them, Forty years, sorry, four hundred years. And I will judge the nation into whom they will be enslaved. God said, After that they shall come out and worship me in this place. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and Abraham became the father of Isaac, and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob of the twelve partisans, and the partisans moved with them be so Joseph into into uh, uh, Egypt, but God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh, king of Egypt who appointed him governor over Egypt and all his and all his house. Then a famine came over all Egypt and Canaan with great affliction, and our fathers found no uh, sustenance. Excuse me. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt. He sent out our fathers to the first time. During the second time, Joseph was made known to his brothers. And Joseph, Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. Oh, let me drink some water. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> All right. 
Did Joseph send? Oh well. Um, okay, yeah. Verse fourteen. Then Joseph sent and called for his father Jacob, and all his uh, kindreds. Let's see here. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that, folks. Seventy-five souls. Then Jacob went down into Egypt, and he and our fathers died, and were carried to Shechem, and put into the tomb that Abraham had bought for a price of silver from the sons of Havar, the father of Shechem. When the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt until another king rose up who did not know Joseph. He dealt, so he dealt uh, deceitfully with our people and mistreat our fathers, forcing them to put on their young cho ch uh, children that they may not live. At that time Moses was born and was fair in the sight of God. And he was reared for three months in his father's house. When he was put out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and and uh, avoid him as his as her own son. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in words and in deed. Mm. When he was 40 years old, he, it came to his heart to visit his brothers, the sons of Israel. But seeing one being wronged, he, he defended him and avenged him, who was oppressed and stuck the Egyptian. He supposed that his brothers would understand that God would deliver them by his hand, but they did not understand. On the next day, he appeared to them as they fought and tried to reconcile them in peace, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong each other? But the one wronging his neighbor put, pushed him away, saying, Who appointed you a ruler and a judge over us? Where you kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Moses fled at his word and became a joint, sojourner in the land of Mid Midland where he became the father of two sons. When forty years had passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, in a flame of fire, in a bush. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight. As he drew near to look at it, the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, I am the Lord of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses trembled and dared not, sorry, and dared not look. Then the Lord says to him, to them, to him, Take off the sin, sorry, take off the shoes from your feet, for the place you are are standing is holy ground. I have indeed seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their groaning, and I have come down to deliver them. Now, come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who appointed you a ruler and a judge? God sent us both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out after he had 
shown so, uh, wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and at the Red Sea and for 40 years in the wilderness. This is the Moses who said to the sons of Israel, The Lord your God will raise up for you, for you a prophet like me whom your brothers, sorry, from your brothers, him you shall hear. This is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received living ordinance to give to us, whom our fathers would not obey but thrust away. And in their hearts they turned back to Egypt saying to Aaron, Make for us God to go before us, for we do not know what has become of this Moses who led us out of the land of Egypt. So they made a calf in those days and offered a sacrifice to, to the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their hands. But God turned and gave them up to worship the hosts of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, uh, O house of Israel, have you offered to me slain animals and sacrifices for forty years in the wilderness? Yes, you even raised the shine of Moloch and the star of your god Ramberna idols, which you, which you made to worship. Therefore, I'll, I, will, I will exile you beyond uh, Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of, of wilderness in the wilderness, telling Moses to make it as he had commanded, according to the pattern that he had seen, which our fathers, having received it, brought with Joshua into the land possessed by by the Gentiles, whom God drove out in front of our fathers until the days of, of David, who found favor in the presence of God and asked to, asked to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. However, the, the Most High does not dwell in houses made with hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where, what house will you build for me, says the Lord? I, or what is the place of my rest? Has not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you... Always resist the Holy Spirit. Whew, I feel this man. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets have you have your fathers not persecuted? They have even killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, of whom you have now become the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, but have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they guttered, so they grind their teeth at him. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he glanced into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And says, Look, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, closed their ears, and rushed, and rushed at him in un unison. And they threw him out of the city and stoned him. The witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of the young man named Saul. They stoned Stephen as he was calling on God, praying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he kneeled it down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, 
do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. And Saul was consenting to his death. Let's go ahead and read ver sorry, read chapter eight, the last chapter. And then we're gonna get into the details. Amen. <clears throat> And on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And they, and they were all scattered throughout the region of Jude, Judah and Samaria, except the apostles. The devoted men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. But Saul revenged the church, entering house to, by house, and dragging out both men and women, and committing them to, you know, committing them to prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere, preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. When the crowd heard Philip and saw the miracles which he did, they listened in unity in unity to what he said. For the unclean spirit, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. Now a man named Simon was previously in the city practicing sorcery in astonishing the nation of Samaria saying he was some one great to whom they all listened, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. They listened to him because for a long time he was astonished them by his sorceries. But whom they believed Philip preaching about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Even Simon himself believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed as he watched the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the, now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent Peter and John to them. When they came down, they prayed for them that they may receive the Holy Spirit, for still he had come on none of them. They were only baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. When, the, when Simon saw that through the laying on the apostles' hands, the, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that whomever I lay on, so I lay hands on, may receive the Holy Spirit. Woo. Peter says to them, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could purchase this key word. Verse 20. Peter says to them, Make your money perish with you, because you thought you could purchase the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor share in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Therefore repent of your wickedness and ask God if perhaps the intent of your heart may be forgiving you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then Simon answered, Pray to the Lord for me, that nothing you have spoken may come upon me. When they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel. <coughs> In many villages of the Samaritans. 
Now an angel of the Lord says to Philip, Rise up and go towards the south on the way that gets down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a this is desert. So he rose up and went, and they were sorry. And there was a man of Ethiopia, a a eunuch of the great authority under Cantinus, a queen of queen of the the Ethiopians, who was in command of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship. He was returning, sitting in his chariot and reading the book of, of Isaiah, the prophet. And the Spirit says to Peter, Go to this chariot and, and stay with it. Then Philip ran to him and heard him reading, read the book of Isaiah, the prophet, and says, Do you understand what you are reading? He says, How can I unless someone guides me? So he invited Philip to come up and, and sit with him. The passage of scripture which was, which he was reading was this. He was laid as a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shatter is silent. So he opened not his mouth and his uh, humiliation justice was denied him who will speak of his gener generations for his life is taken from the earth the eunuch says to, to Philip I ask you of whom does the prophet speak of himself of himself or of someone else then Philip spoke beginning with the same scripture and preached Jesus to him as they went on their way they came to some water, and the eunuch says, Look, here, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Philip says, If you believe with all your heart, you, you may. Ask, uh, he asks, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commands the chariot to halt. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he was baptized. Sorry, he baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord took Philip away. Then the eunuch saw him no more. And he went his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Agonis. And passing through, he preached the gospel in all the city until he came to uh, Caceres. Uh, I can't pronounce that. All right. So that's the end of chapter 8. So there's a lot of jam-packed stuff from chapters 6 to chapter 8. And so let's take a look at chapter 6. Chapter 6, uh, the simplest outline from verses 1 through 7 talks about seven chosen to serve as deacons. And verses 8 through 15 talk about Stephen accused of being accused of blasphemy. So number one, the office of the deacon is present until now. And we see this in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 10 through 13, which I... Holly encourage you to read that scripture that talks about the office of the deacon. And so the Greek word for deacon in is di no sorry is um diaconus. It means to care for the poor, charge of distribution the the money collecting for the use a servant. And number two, Stephen speak boldness, and yet he was accused of being blasphemous. Which let's get into chapter chapter seven. In verses one through eight, the call of Abraham. In verses nine through sixteen, the 
Hardness in Egypt in verses 17 through 36. God delivers Israel by Moses in verses 37 through 43. Israel rebels against God. Verses 44 to 50, God's true tabernacle. In verses 55 to 53, Israel resists the Holy Spirit. In verses uh, 54 through 60, Stephen martyred. The first ever martyrdom is Stephen. Okay, he was the first one who died for the faith. Sadly enough, we're still seeing many are being martyred, being 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 like being killed like lambs, basically. Especially in, in, in you know the Middle East and and in communistic countries. They were dying for the faith. Now, I'm glad that I live in America that the freedom of religion and the freedom of speech is still applies. But all that will be taken out away once they well, once they establish the new world order and the Antichrist will rise and take power and they will get rid of and there will be one world religion. Yeah, it's going to be bad. I just know it. It's going to be bad. But number one, don't be afraid to speak the truth. For what Stephen has said, he laid out the, 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 the summary of the Old Testament. And because of them, because of these religious, religious leaders, they rejected the Holy Spirit. And we see that today. To this to this day, we see that the Baptists and those who don't believe in the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Holy Spirit, they're missing out, man. They're missing. They they are. They they're missing it, you know. And I praise God that the Lord baptized me with His Holy Spirit because I know for a fact that yes, signs and wonders are for today. And I seen and I seen it for myself. And that, and that I don't, I don't allow myself to be afraid of, of speaking the truth. And number two, don't be afraid to die for Christ. Don't you know, you'll be in heaven all eternity with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. In chapter, in chapter eight. Verses 1 through 3, Saul persecuted the church. And verses 4 through 8, Christ is preached in Samaria. And verses 9 through 13, the sorcerer's profession of faith. And verses 14 through 25, the sorcerer's sin. Verses 26 through 40, Christ is preached to an Ethiopian. So number one, what is sorcerer? Who who is a sorcerer? What is sorcery? A a person sorcery is a person who claims or is believed to have magic powers. In other terms, a sorcerer can be a wizard, or a sorcerer can be a warlock. Okay, and sorcery is use of magic. Especially back, uh, <clears throat> especially black magic, and to this very very day, black magic is rampant. You know, in Africa, in the Caribbean islands, doing voodoo's and in, in, in uh, Santa Maria and all that stuff. Um, better yet, black magic is very very dangerous. Uh, demons are not your best friend. And I seen I mean, I seen the I seen a, a music video by White White Chapel, which is which is a uh, Satanist metal band. Um, uh, the name of that song was called um, "When When a Demon Defied a Witch." And yeah, the the music video is very very graphic. I was like, what? What kind of song is this? 
<laughs> what kind of song is this? I was like, huh, that's funny. But at the same time, you know, is a is a very real thing. As that name, as that the the name of the song when a demon defiled a witch by white white chapel. It's a whole different ball game. Uh, when I hear that song, it it, uh, it doesn't feel right in my spirit at all. But number two, don't mix the power of God with sorcery. It is very very dangerous. And yet, God hates sorcery. God hates uh, when people are using money to have the power of God. No, you know, the power of God is free, man. It's not, you know, the power of God is not for sale. Signs and wonders is not for sale. That what that 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 screws up what that sorcerer did. And Peter says, by discernment. I know your intent. You're trying to buy the power of God from us so that you can make money, lay on hands, selling that power of God to those who, Peter says, that's not, that's not how we roll. And so the sorcerer got punished for doing that. And that, yeah, Satan will kind of fight. Sorry, Satan will counterfeit the gifts of the spirit through mediums, through the paranormal, through black, you know, practicing black magic, white magic, uh, singing out a witch doctor, witchcraft. All these things are counterfeit to what we have. Through the Holy Spirit. It is, by the, through, it is by the Holy Spirit. We gain the access. Of the power of God. So that we can. Not only do signs and wonders. But to have wisdom. To have understanding of the word of God. To have that boldness to speak. The word of God. It's absolutely free. This is why I don't, that's why I don't you know, create, you know, uh, a course for, for, for $99 just to learn the New Testament. No. I'll show it for free through this channel, amen. So, it, you know, it, it, that, that's why I don't, don't sell uh, in ministry. But, you know, when, when I do business, uh, either doing like you know, the skills that I do or if I get a new job that pays more you know that's fine but ministry wise the word of God should not be for sale the power of God should not be for sale at all amen spread the word of God I love it uh, I'm glad that I'm being a part of a church that does local and global missions. And I'm big on uh, world missions, global missions, whatever that you want to call. Spreading the word of God like wildfire is the main objective to the church. We see that in you know in Acts. The, the, the word of God was spreading spreading like wildfire. To the point where Stephen got 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 a uh, got martyred and then the church started to go everywhere from Samaria to Judea to uh, down there in Alexandria to Egypt to whatever you know, Asian Minor they were spreading out all over the place and they are spreading they are spray, uh, spreading the word of God like never before amen so that's all I got for today, folks. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, tomorrow I'll be doing the video podcast, hopefully early in the morning. So I'll get that done for my date tomorrow. So I'll, you know, uh, I'm a very, very busy man. You know, this is this is a first timer for me. 
that I'm, you know, my schedule is getting nearer and nearer. To, it's kind of hard to find time to teach you guys the Word of God. Amen. But I will be looking for another job. Uh, right now, I'm just not. I'm just not too happy with the current job that I'm in right now. But I bless them by my labor. I bless them. But financially, I need to increase my income. So yeah. So uh, I can't thank you guys for just giving me your prayers. Uh, especially, you know, pray for me that I have a successful uh, job search. And yeah, so may God bless you. May God keep you. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.